And we're going to continue our sermon series entitled Mammon. And we're going to talk about some money stuff today. Yeah. And um, it's going to relate to um, money as, as in terms of relationships, right? So he money, she money is the topic for today. And it might get a little sticky, but it's going to be good. 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 So let's go ahead and get settled. Um, we got a bunch of things up here. And y- y'all probably saying, what in the world is going on? But we working with it. And it's going to be good. It's going to be um, fun today. Y'all ready for the presentation for the talk today? Um, I think it's going to be cool. He money, she money. And so when we were thinking about this, PJ and I, we were saying, hey, there's so much we could say about money and marriage, even money and relationships if you're in here and you're single. And when we started thinking about it, we said, you know what? Money in marriage is kind of like making a green smoothie. And so we're going to make a green smoothie today. And I knew I wouldn't get any claps because I don't know how many folks drink green smoothies. Um, yeah, we got a few. Got a few, right? Yep. All right, all right, we're doing all right. And um, the first time PJ presented a green smoothie to me years ago, just by the looks of it, I was like, absolutely not. Um, There's no way we can do that, okay? But after tasting it and going through it, I realized that it's it's beneficial. So we wanna talk to you from that premise. As we go along, we're gonna make this smoothie and it's really important. So PJ, why don't you kick it off? We're gonna give you Um, six essential ingredients that you need to know about money and marriage or money and relationships. Six essential ingredients. We want you to write them down as we go along. So let's go. All right. So the first thing is obviously if you're going to make a green smoothie, it's got to have a foundation. That foundation has to be greens. All right. So for today's intents and purposes, our greens of choice are going to be spinach. It's spinach. But In a marriage or in a relationship as it relates to money, the foundation has to be trust. Trust is the foundation of any successful relationship. Whether you're single and you have relationships with your friends, you're married, you have a relationship with your spouse, trust has to be the foundation. Because here's the thing about successful relationships. Secrets hinder success. Secrets hinder success. Say that again. A third time. Secrets (laughs) hinder success. Yeah. Secrets hinder success. Right. Y'all want to five is the number of grace. Secrets hinder success. Because here's the thing: some people, when it comes to marriage, they believe that a secret account is the same thing as a separate account. Mm. A separate account may be okay, but a secret account will hinder your success every time. Come on. So here's the thing. I, I know of a couple right now. They are both highly successful. And the wife said in a, in a forum where she was talking to other wives that she has a separate account. But the reason, and she said it's a separate account for frivolous things. Like she just throws money at that and she'll use it for a random spa day. She'll use it for a handbag. She'll use it for things that she may see that right. aren't in the main household budget. So she'll pull from that separate account. Yeah. But the reason why her marriage is still successful is because she said the account is separate, but it's not a secret. In fact, she trusts her husband so much that he has the login information to that separate account. He doesn't use it, but her thought process is, suppose he finds himself on the road one day with an extreme emergency, and the money we have in our joint account is not enough to cover what he needs. He needs to be able to get into my separate account. Right. And so she's like, he has the login, he has the password, but I don't understand a husband or a wife who says, I trust my spouse, you just can't have my password. Come on. I trust my spouse, you just can't have my username. Pastor can get into my phone anytime he wants. And the thing about trust is he doesn't actually log into my phone all day, every day. But if he need some of y'all, if you pass out on the side of the road, your spouse couldn't get into your phone. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. It did get quiet, Rob. Yeah. Because maybe there's some secrets hindering some success. This is so good. Write this down. How you trust your spouse with money, okay, is an indicator of how you trust your spouse in the marriage. You can't tell me you trust your spouse with everything, but you don't really trust them with all of your money. And what, what I think we're suffering from is we can trust someone with our heart, but we can't trust them with our money. Number one, what does that say about you? Number two, what does that say about your relationship with money? Perhaps money has such a hold on your life that you can trust your spouse with your body, but you can't trust them with your money. And that's a critical crack in any relationship. Mm -hmm. If you're a single in here and you're looking to get married and you trust that person, but you're questioning whether you trust them with money, then that's something you need to consider before you tie the knot. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So trust is a good foundation. Yep. All right. Let, let's go to the next component because I think that um, this is important. You know, our relationship with money, how we've been shaped with money, how we think about money influences what we do together in marriage. So number two, you have to have goals and a sense of quality of life. Money isn't just used for bills, but money should be used for goals and to enhance your quality of life. So if we're building a green smoothie, you can't have a smoothie that tastes good if you don't add some sweetness. So we're going to put in some bananas because perhaps your money in your marriage isn't sweet enough. It, it's not... It's not geared towards the fun things in life. That, that money is only used to cover the water bill, the electrical bill, a flat tire, but it's not used for fun things. Right. When's the last time you use money for a vacation? Some, some folks in here, some folks watching me online today are, are in a place where money isn't sweet. Mm -hmm. And God never called you to live a life where you don't have any pleasure, where you don't have any fun, where you don't have an abundant life. Because Jesus said, I've come to give you life and life more abundantly. Jesus also said that in life you will have trouble, right? right? So if you're going to have trouble, he's giving you money so that you can go out on a date. You, 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 you can find a way to spend a few dollars and take your spouse out to coffee right. or, 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 or go for a walk and, and, and share a story or somehow use money to fund the quality of life that you believe God has called you to. Yes. And, and too many times our lives as it relates to money, our marriages as it relates to money are so bitter are so bitter you can't drink your finances you can't digest them because it's not sweet yeah it's not sweet it's not sweet maybe you came from an environment where um it was such a struggle or there wasn't this good sense of finances this balanced life where maybe as a kid you didn't go on vacations Maybe they were spaced out, few and far between. Maybe you couldn't play soccer, even though you wanted to, because your parents could have afforded it. You couldn't pay for the uniform. Maybe, maybe there were things you didn't get, and you developed this sense, this idea that money isn't used to bless my life. Mm -hmm. So we have to add some sweetness, PJ. Yep. You got anything to add to that? So there's a scripture in Ecclesiastes chapter 10, right. verse 19, and it, it, I like that scripture because it goes along with what you were saying about money can't be used just for bills, can't just be used uh, for things that feel burdensome. Right. Uh, but the Bible says bread is made for laughter and wine gladdens life and money answers everything. Some translations say money answers all things. Yeah. So maybe... The answer in this season to the frustration that you're experiencing in your marriage is just that you need to take your money and go hang out with your spouse. Oh. 
I, I didn't think that would seem like such a bad idea. Yeah. Don't take that money and go hang out with your coworker to blow off steam. You don't have money to hang out with your spouse, but you can find the money for girls' night. But you can find the money to go hang out with the guys. Here's, here's another thing, Pastor, that I wrote down. I said, a marriage that always sees money as a burden will be a marriage that never experiences complete bliss. Because you don't think that God gave you money for the purpose yeah. of enjoying your spouse. That's you think good. it's only to keep a roof over your head, food on the table, lights on, yeah. pay off debt. Yeah. But the Bible says money answers all things. So my, managing your money well means that you can actually use money to find bliss in your marriage. God doesn't want you to see money as a burden. He wants you to manage it well so it can be access to bliss. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that we, PJ, we shy away from the idea of money being bliss or money, money to, to provide blessing for, for us because perhaps in the church we've gone to the other side too mm -hmm. far and we have all heard about the prosperity gospel and, right. you know, the negative side to the prosperity gospel. But God wants you to prosper. Yes. There is a power that you get with doing life with someone else mm -hmm. and putting money together that you won't get when you do it by yourself. It doesn't mean you can't be successfully single. Right. It means that if you sign up for marriage, why not enjoy all the benefits of doing money together? Right. That we can enjoy something together. That we're not living married, but then enjoying life separately. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's go to the next one, PJ. Well, Let's keep building this, or if you got something else. Well, just a word for the singles. Yeah, go ahead. While we're on this... Um, topic is this since we said money should be used to to have access to bliss and to achieve goals please be mindful that you don't link up with somebody who has zero financial goals if while you're single they're letting you know I don't know what I want to do with my money in the next five years I have no clue where I want to be in the next 10 years you don't have any clue we're not saying that if once you say it in this setting that you have to hold to that but we're saying if you don't even have a dream you don't even have a vision you don't even have a goal singles that is your red flag That's good. if he's like i don't know god you know, god got me okay god got you but i'm not going to so yeah yeah that's your red flag that's good uh, uh, let me piggyback on that yeah real quick are they a giver are they a tither before you connect to someone are they a giver? Because we're out here connecting to people based on how they look physically, but you don't understand the deep tremors of their heart, mm -hmm. the deep palpitations of their heart, the deep nuances of their heart. Are they a giver? Because that will affect whether or not you can actually enjoy life and money will be sweet for you. Yes. So let's, let's keep pushing. Mm -hmm. All right. We have some peanut butter. We just PJ. need some spoons. PJ, take that one. So the thing about uh, peanut butter is peanut butter here is representing your protein because protein is what fuels you. All right. Um, protein is what fuels you. We personally, in our house, we don't like protein powder. Um, that's our prerogative. If you like protein powder, you can put protein powder in your smoothie. Right. But depending on what other fruits or, or what type of smoothie I'm making, we'll use peanut butter because peanut butter is protein and it fuels your body. But here's what fuels a marriage. A healthy marriage is fueled by purpose. So money is a tool that God uses in your marriage to strengthen your marriage, but also to fuel the purpose of your marriage. So if you're currently single but you desire to be married please understand that you getting married is not just God's way of giving you companionship on earth that's part of it of course but ultimately a kingdom marriage always has a purpose attached to it yeah. 
Let's go. So you're really not getting married just for you. You're getting married to fulfill God's purpose for your marriage in the earth. If you're already married and you haven't heard that before, it doesn't mean you don't have purpose. It means God is saying this is your sign to pray and lean in and say, what is our purpose in our marriage? Are we called to take in orphans? Are we called to help the homeless? Are we called to run financial seminars? Are we called to uh, impact the schools in our area? Like for Pastor and I, we know that one of our purposes in marriage is to help other marriages grow and thrive and be healthy. But you need a sense of purpose to keep the marriage going because if you think that because you like them today, yeah. <laughs> this is a real yeah. talk. We don't do fake Ooh. from this pulpit. Because you can love your spouse every day, but some days you might not like them. Come on. And they might not like you. But if you know what your purpose is, that's what fuels the marriage and keeps you going on days when you're like, I don't think I'm hanging out with you today, but you don't leave the whole thing and let it go because you're like, but ultimately what's bringing me back is the purpose. That's so good. Um, this is one thing that probably they didn't teach you or um, talk to you about as it relates to marriage because we just connect to who we love, who we're physically attracted to, who we like, mm -hmm. who makes our life better. But God doesn't bring two people together unless he has a purpose for their lives together. Yes. Together, together. Mm -hmm. And if God has privileged you to say you should be connected to someone else, that means your greater purpose is realized when you're together. Yes. And I think we minimize that because we spend our lives going through life just trying to make it through. But we don't have any fuel mm -hmm. to say, are we putting our money into purpose? Yes. So your money shouldn't only go to Netflix. It shouldn't only go to a vacation. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't only go to pay for tuition. It shouldn't only go for these things. How about fueling purpose with your money? Yeah. Can you look at your budget and say, we're going to take a portion of what we get and we're going to pour it into our purpose. Yes. If you don't know your purpose, then you should take some time, figure that out. Take some time, talk about it. One of the easiest ways to discover purpose yeah, next, right? <laughs> I love that. Absolutely. Sit know right your purpose, on this row after service and come to next. <laughs> Discover our, your purpose. Connect to God. Wild. Connect to people. Connect to purpose. Absolutely. I love these shameless plugs. This is good. Our church is wild. Um, one of the things <laughs> outside of next, outside of next, <laughs> one of the things that helps you discover your purpose is what is your passion? Right. Usually, it doesn't have to be, but usually you connect to someone in marriage because you have like passions. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean you have the same personality. Right. It doesn't mean you're both adventurous, mm -hmm. but there's some commonality right. as it relates to passion or else you probably wouldn't do life with them. So you can discover purpose because it's usually in the neighborhood of your passion. Right. And so we want you today to think about money as a resource that God has given you to push your purpose down the road. Mm -hmm. All right. That's why you need some fuel. And I, and I think you can make a green smoothie definitely without fuel, but it's, it's missing a benefit. Right. It's missing, hey, we just don't drink green smoothies. How many people just drink green smoothies? No, we just don't drink <laughs> green smoothies. Somebody in the back said me, Pastor. Well, um, that's them. I just don't <laughs> drink green smoothies. <clears throat> it's got to serve a purpose. It's got to serve okay, so, a purpose. So the green smoothie for you has to, so the ingredients have to have a health benefit. You need to know what the health benefits are or else you're still not drinking it. Or else I'm not drinking it. See, and this is how far we've come. After 17 years of being married. So as yeah. you can see, yeah. the, the purpose sometimes is I just don't want my to hear my wife telling me about why I'm not healthy. Thank you. Thank you. So it's whatever you. fuels you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So number four. Okay. If you were here last week. 
If you were here last week. You know, week, these are blueberries. We don't have any wow. strawberries, but we have blueberries wow. here, wow. which is the next ingredient. It's funny. So um, I can't do these accents, man. I just stay in my lane. Um, my mind is just thinking of things right now. So I just got to keep pushing. Um, the fourth thing is generosity. Generosity. So the thing about blueberries is that blueberries are small, but they're mighty. Small, but mighty. They have antioxidants. They have health benefits. <clears throat> you may not love the taste of blueberries, but they're small and they're mighty. The thing about generosity is that when it comes to marriage, when it comes to relationships, I talked a little bit about are they a giver? The reason why your spouse, your significant other, the person you want to marry, the reason why it's important that they be generous is that when God sees you as a couple, he sees you as one. Right. So if they are stingy, you can't say they're stingy and you're not. You can only say we're stingy. <laughs> All of their bad habits as it relates to generosity become yours. Because God sees it as one. So we, so we have to take a critical look then and say, mm -hmm. are we being generous? Right. Not just am I being generous, you're not single. Are, are, are we being generous? Right. Because these small seeds can reap mighty harvest. It's amazing how money begins to open up and flow in a marriage mm -hmm. when we're generous. And we're not just generous with time. You have to be generous with money. Yeah. You have to be able to say, I can give this away. I can give that away. As we're in this season of giving, what are you as a couple going to do together to give money away? Mm -hmm. To give money away. Generosity is important. Mm -hmm. And it just reminds me of uh, that scripture that talks about um, it's the little foxes that spoil the vine. Yeah. And so it, it starts maybe with a few dollars here, a few dollars there. But you have to ask yourself, am I or is my spouse holding us back because they are just not generous? Yeah. And, you know, it's funny. Stinginess with money can come in so many different forms because um, I'm thinking of a couple uh, – doesn't live anywhere near here. But the wife was saying that she would get frustrated because she said her husband was so tight with money that if they went to like a, a couple's gathering at someone's house and they were responsible for bringing the juice, yeah. he would bring just enough because he's like, how many people are going to be there? He's calculating to see just enough juice. And if there was any juice left over, he's taking it home. Y'all say, oh, 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 as if we ain't got people. So she's like, that instead, she was like, she would always feel like, just leave it here. Like, it's, it's a little bit of juice. Just leave it here. But he would always be like, I'm taking it home because I spent my money on that juice. Yeah. But the thing is that it started what she thought was just juice or snacks at a party. And it caused great, tremendous hardship and pain for both of them. Because at his core, money was his thing that he was like, I just can't let that go. So it holds you back. But we have a challenge we can interject. Yeah, let's talk about the challenge. So we have this challenge that was presented to us when we were going through premarital counseling. And sometimes we bring it back. We've given it to other couples, asked for feedback. They say that it's great. They never thought of it. So the challenge, if you're in this um, auditorium and you're married, your challenge is take the next seven days to try to outdo your spouse. Now, you're trying to outdo them as it relates to kindness and generosity. So you're using your money to uh, maybe pick up their favorite candy bar. Maybe you're using uh, money to get them a car wash if they normally are the ones that wash their car. Uh, however, you don't have to spend hundreds of dollars, thousands of dollars. We got legacy offering coming up. That, that's on December 1st. So... Um, so we don't want, if God told you to give a certain amount, don't pull from that. Yeah. That's not what this challenge is. Don't pull from that. Yeah. But seriously, spend just seven days trying to outdo your spouse. What does that do? It puts you in the mindset of generosity because now you're always thinking, what can I do for them? Not just what can I do for me? That's so good. And I think that if you're single, 
in the room, you can find a best friend. Let's say you're not even in a relationship. You can find a best friend. You can find somebody in your family. Maybe you're really close with your cousin. You're really close with your mom. And you can just start being generous. When you're single, what you do when you're single definitely affects what will happen when you get married. Don't waste these years saying, I'm going to be generous when I get a spouse. What if you needed to just sow some seeds of generosity when you're single and then you reap the harvest of a generous spouse? Mm -hmm. I don't want singles to miss today how much this talk about money can help you. Because if you're single and you want to get married, some of the things you incorporate right now make a difference as it relates to who God connects you to. Yeah. If God can see when you're single, you're a certain type of purpose person. You're pers purpose driven. You are generous. You are kind. Then God sends you the right person to connect to that so that your purpose is enhanced. I think that's important mm -hmm. to remember that this may be a challenge for married couples, but how can you use it for yourself while you're single? Yep. All right, how y'all doing out there? Does it, is this good? Is this good so far? All right. Um, we're going to go to the next one. Okay? We'll go to the next one. And <clears throat> this is a pretty good smoothie. All right, it's a pretty good smoothie so far. Got some good components to it. However, if we were to blend this right now, it wouldn't be liquid, right? It would be pretty chunky. It would be hard to get down. So every good smoothie needs some almond milk. Some almond milk. We're almond milk people. Something that will bind the components. This is our smoothie, right? This is what we like. <laughs> um, number five, or number, yeah, number five is communication. Yeah. Communication. Yeah. Oh, my goodness, communication. Let's park right here yep. for a little bit because communication connects the dots. It's always going to be he money, she money, separate money, unless you talk about it. Yes. And we sense that as we were going through this, that there are people in this room right now that are frustrated with their money as a couple because they're going through financial challenges. And they've been going through financial challenges for a while. And it's amazing how when you go through these dark times financially, how it strains the marriage. Money is so critical to marriage because what do you do when you go through financial challenges? And I, and I wanna just speak to um, the guys in the room a little bit to maybe say, hey, we could think about it a little bit differently. We could open up our perspective because we need to understand what happens when we go through financial challenges in a marriage. What happens more specifically to our spouse? Mm -hmm. How does financial strain make your wife feel? <laughs> financial strain, from what I've learned, is that when a woman feels financial strain, they feel unsafe. They feel unprotected. They feel exposed. It's not that they're trying to nag you. It's just that they may have a little bit of fear about what's going to happen. So one of the things that you can do, PJ, why don't you talk about one of the helpful things that a man can do for his wife when they go through financial strain and struggle. What does, what does it do for a woman when a man supports her through financial challenge? Yeah, I think um, one of the big things 
sorry, one of the big things is um, as much as possible trying not to just shut down, right? Because sometimes um, men just don't want to talk about it. Um, yeah. I've learned that sometimes if a man doesn't yet have a plan, the last thing he wants you to do is say, well, what's the plan? Because he's like, I don't know, and I wish you hadn't asked. Yeah. But sometimes that can cause them to retreat or to um, shut down. I would say not uh, shutting down as big, communicate as much as you possibly can, yeah. but also reassuring her in ways that you may not realize are reassuring. Letting her know that you're there. How can you let her know that you're there? Why not give her a hug that doesn't have to lead somewhere? Say that again. Because that's difficult to get. <laughs> Can I just say that's a little difficult to get? A hug that leads nowhere? Nah, nah. Nah. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, uh. Holding her hand, that leads nowhere. Okay. Re teach me. Teach physically me. reassuring her, because if it always has to lead somewhere, all she's left with is, it has to lead somewhere, and you still don't have a plan. <laughs> okay. So I, I, right. I still don't know how much I can spend on groceries. Where week. do we win, right? I still don't know who's paying the, how we're paying the rent or the mortgage. Okay? Because when that wears off at the end of the day, what's the plan? I, I need details. And that is why she needs reassurance that doesn't always lead somewhere. Now, pastor, let guys down a road of, well, that's difficult. Try. Why you say it like that? In that tone of voice. <laughs> that's how we sound? Okay. To try, because that would help. I'm, that's so good. Seriously, that's so good. Because <laughs> we, we have work to do on both sides. Yeah. Amen. If we have to make money work together, mm -hmm. then I need to understand how you feel when we go through financial challenges that right. I can't always see it through my lens. Mm -hmm. That two or three hugs throughout the day that lead nowhere will actually bring more peace to where we're going and what we're trying to get through than me saying, you know what, she's good. I don't need to do that mm -hmm. because she knows I got her. No, she doesn't know that. She, she doesn't know that. The way, the way that a woman is wired, right. it's not that they're trying to divorce us, right. but they're a little nervous. There's something innately um, constructed within a woman that she just needs to feel safe. And she doesn't need to feel rich. She needs to feel safe. safe. Yes, yes, yes. That is so good because that is so true. But you know, on the flip side, Pastor, yeah. speaking to the ladies, one of the worst things you can do also, though, if you're going through financial hardship with your spouse, is to nag. <laughs> oh, yes. I should have said that one. I should have said not, that one. I mean, not too much on the agreement, but okay. <laughs> I should have said that one. But um, the worst thing we can do is nag. So I'm not saying you can't ask any questions. You actually absolutely should ask questions because it's part of communication. But the never-ending questions, the never-ending we need more money, the never-ending. Here's the thing. If you have a good man, trust me, he is not excited about the fact that you all are struggling financially. Come on. In fact... Because of how God wired men, they want to provide for you. They want to do the right thing. And they're feeling vulnerable and insecure. If he just lost his job or he's got business deals that are uh, falling through yeah. or you all have just come up on other hardship yeah. that has caused finances to be extremely tight, trust me, if you've got a good man, he's not sitting back nonchalant. He's actually maybe while you're sleeping up at night trying to figure out how am I going to make this work. Absolutely. So the worst thing we can do is say to him, uh, you know, we're tight again this week. Ma'am, he knows. <laughs> Thank you. We right. ain't that dumb. <laughs> if you know money is tight and y'all are in the same house because you're in the same marriage, sis, he knows your, your money is tight. Yeah. 
Yeah. So he doesn't need you to overdo the questions. No, no, he, he doesn't know. They want the, you to underdo the questions, but don't overdo it. Underdo, please, underdo it, undercook it. Um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> um, one of the hardest things for a man to say is, I don't know. Yeah. Absolutely. Boom. One of the hardest things for a man to say is, I don't know. Yes. And it's hard for him to admit that to you. I don't really know where it's coming from. I don't really know what happened. I'm trying, but I don't know. And the more that we can have this kind of communication that says, all right, we do need to figure this out. So you don't know, and I feel a little bit unsafe. Why don't we plan a time where we can talk about this? Yeah. And you take it in bite-sized pieces. like. Right. You may not be able to figure out the entire financial challenge in one night, mm -hmm. in one meeting. Just take aspects of it to just take a step forward and say, okay, we're going to try this. We're going to try that. I think sometimes when we communicate, we just want to solve everything yeah. right now. Mm -hmm. It may take a while right. to bring the credit score back up. Mm -hmm. it, it, it may take a while to get disciplined to play to pay off all of the debt and right. all of the credit cards mm -hmm. it, you just have to walk it together yep. so we have a scripture here in Amos 3 verse 3 yeah can two walk together except they agree or be agreed mm -hmm. agreed to meet uh, unless unless you have an agreement over money right you can't walk together. Mm -hmm. You can't walk together. So, you know, we made this smoothie. And Pastor, can I just say this for the singles while you're sure, getting sure. the blender together? Is that if you are single and the relationship is going in a direction where you believe that it's headed towards marriage, it is a red flag if they are not willing to talk about finances. You have to have that That's conversation. So yes. If they're saying all the right things and it seems like they're doing all the right things, but all of a sudden, anytime it comes to money, they don't want to have a conversation. You need to figure out why, but you need to proceed with caution because just because you say I do doesn't mean they now are be going to become comfortable talking about money. And in marriage, money doesn't work if it's only marriage, but never communicated. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can't just have your own separate ways of managing money. You have to communicate how are we going to manage money, how are we going to spend money, how are we yeah. going to use money. Yeah. So if you're single, FYI, I'm not saying don't ever marry that person, but I'm saying proceed with caution and try to get to the root of why is it they don't want to talk about money. Okay? Because maybe they're figuring that, you know, Jesus paid it all, but you need to know how much all is <laughs> before yeah. you tie the knot. Yeah. Um that's so good. And we created this smoothie here, and I think um, it's a good smoothie. It's a, it's a powerful smoothie. And we're getting ready to, to blend this. See, the thing about um, he money, she money is I think this is the way some marriages and money look. A lot of components together, but you can still make out he money, she money. I, I put this in, they put that in. Mm -hmm. I make 70%, they make 30%. Right. So that means I make 70% of the decisions, they make 30% of the decisions. Mm. But when you stood in front of that minister and you said, I do, yep. did he pronounce you as a joint venture or did he pronounce you as one? We have adopted this phrase from the culture, this word from the culture that says that marriage is a partnership. Mm -hmm. And I get it because I've embraced it to a degree as well. Right. But when we started looking at money, we realized that marriage is not a joint venture. It's not a partnership. It's not even 50-50. It's not 100-100. Marriage is one. Yeah. Marriage is the most unique coming together of two people that the world and the universe has ever seen. Mm -hmm. When God instituted marriage, it's a unique coming together that is on a level that a partnership is not. Yeah. When God looks at your money, 
If you're working and she's not, or she's working and you're not, mm -hmm. or she makes more than you, or you make more than her, right. when God looks at the money, he looks at it as one. Mm -hmm. So we got to blend this thing. We got to blend this thing. Oh, I, I didn't put on the top. And that's a lot of folk in this room. They get ready to mix their money and they ain't got no God on top. Yeah, y'all thought I was slipping. Yeah, so, so you can blend your money with your spouse, but if God is not on top, your money goes all over the place. And I was saving hospitality today because I didn't blend this thing and create a mess. <laughs> but you can imagine what would happen if you blended your money without a top. So, PJ, it's on. let's get this thing going. When God says money should be in marriage, this is what it looks like. It looks like one. Where are the blueberries? Where's the bananas? Where's the greens? Where's the milk? You can't tell. Because it's not he money, mm -hmm. she money. It's we money. Yeah. Oh, oh. I sense in the room right now today that you need to hold your spouse a little bit tighter right now. I sense in the room right now that, that we need to say, how do we get this thing as one? How do we no longer argue over what you bring to the table and what I bring to the table? And we say it's one. The power of marriage, even the United States and the legal system looks at your money as one. That, that you can't separate the two because you've been intertwined and intermingled and blended together. Everyone stand all over the room. We got to wrap this up. That, that you can't separate what God has joined together. And you can be joined physically. You can be joined emotionally. But if you're not joined financially, it's just a partnership. It's just a partnership that you haven't sold out to. It's just a partnership that you're still concerned that what happens if it doesn't go well? What happens if they leave me? My, my, my grandmother told me, my auntie told me I should keep a little bit back in case it doesn't go right. Marriage is the greatest risk you can ever take. Because it takes all of you to do it right. That if you're going to risk your money in marriage and it doesn't go right, you lose. You lose. You lose. You lose. There are certain things in life that are worth the risk. That I risk losing because the benefits of winning outweigh the possibility of losing. I need in this room right now for you to bow your heads and close your eyes. We prayed over couples before we came here today that if you're standing next to your spouse, I need you to grab their hand right now. I need you to grab their hand. If your spouse isn't here, I need you to put them on your mind. If you're single in the room and you're believing God for a spouse, I need you to press into that faith right now. That, that God has something for you. That God has someone for you. That God is preparing you for a partner, for a spouse, for someone that will enhance your purpose. I need you to squeeze their hand even more right now. I need you to squeeze them in this moment because God is congealing your money, your finances together that he won't only supply your needs, but he'll supply your wants. Come
come on in this room right now let's go ahead and pray let's pray before we end this I need you to open your mouth and I need you to pray all over this room that I need you to grab the hand of your spouse in the name of Jesus God we declare right now in this room that we will experience victory in our finances that God you would correct every mistake you would clean up every debt God that you would bring us together with our spouse like never before I pray for marriages in this room that this ministry will cultivate healthy marriages in the name of Jesus God that will grow together that will walk together that in the name of Jesus there's no mountain we can't climb together there's no valley we can't cross together so God open up the windows of heaven pour out a blessing they don't have room to receive give them goals give them ideas give them businesses God open up the windows of heaven and grant it to them now so father we rebuke the devourer in the name of Jesus we rebuke the hand of the enemy over every couple over every single person in the room God that you would bless them you would prosper them you would grow them even now that father one word one principle that we released into this atmosphere God would go for their good that 2025 would be the most prosperous year of their life in the name of Jesus God the most prosperous year in their marriage in their relationships that you'll work it out for our good in Jesus name amen 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 clap it up for Jesus today what an inspiring word that was my name is Chandra and I want to invite you to give here at link we're a generous church and I would like to invite you to partner with us by following the instructions on the screen below that's all we have for today. I pray that you have an amazing week and you live life connected.